fishing at age five. A natural competitiveness became evident early. Clay never allowed his physical disabilities to be an obstacle and began competing in fishing tournaments at the age of 15. Clay spends the majority of his time sharing his life experiences through motivational and leadership presentations in various companies, charities, and churches. Clay currently fishes the Bassmaster Open Series and select charity events. He's very passionate about helping people with special needs, especially kids. Clay's motto for life is, if I can, you can. It's that motto and his tireless efforts that has led to him being honored at tomorrow's Bassmaster Classic weigh-in. Today, Clay is going to show us how he ties knots. Thank you, Clay. Thank you. You're welcome. How's everybody doing today? We appreciate Oh, Lord, I've got some old-time friends, I see. Appreciate all of you coming out. Uh, I've been blessed to be on Yamaha's pro team now for several years and uh, was honored that they asked me to come in and do this uh, demonstration. Um, I will try my best to demonstrate this the best I can where everybody can see it. Um, although I do a lot of the tying inside behind my lips, but I will at least um, walk you through the steps, what I'm doing and what I'm tying. And if anybody's got any questions about anything regarding knots or anything about fishing or Yamaha, y'all ask me and I'll be glad to answer it. Um, as far as fishing knots, I've tied about every one that is in the fishing knot book or whatever. I've tied them all. Um, they're all good knots. But what I've, what I've become to realize in uh, over 20 years of full-time tournament angling is there's only about three of them that really and truthfully that for time's sake, um, I tried to narrow it down and see what was the most efficient knot to tie, to see what was the best one to tie. Um, you know, for top waters, you name it, whatever the lures are, whatever the technique that I'm doing is. With that being said, um, the knot that I tie the majority of the time, some people call it the old Chilene knot. Um, some people call it the improved cinch knot. They call it different names. Um, but this knot is a knot that I tie all the time unless I'm throwing a top water walking bait where I want the bait to have some uh, loose slack in the line to walk easier, or if I tie like a, a leader to a main line, then I use a blood knot. But outside of that, um, the only knot I tie is this uh, improved cinch, or a lot of people call it the old Chilean knot. Um, one thing I do different about it, where a lot of people just put the line through the hook aisle at once, I put it through it twice and double it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate this. And I will warn y'all, if y'all have weak stomachs, you might want to close your eyes, but I'll warn you when, because I will bury this hook in my hand to, to sit it down. So I go through the hook aisle at once, as you can see. I've got about 8 to 10 inches of slack on my tag line currently. I would have picked a jig to tie on because outside of a jerk bait, a jig is the hardest bait to tie this knot in because all the skirts. I got about six or eight inches of tag. And this is braid. Ordinarily, I use this knot uh, on fluorocarbon or braid. But then I take the line, and the way I went through the first time, which is what would be considered the outside or the front side of the jig eyelet, which if you're looking at the jig straight on, it'll be the front, out, front part of the eyelet that you're looking at. Does it matter which side you go in? It's personal preference. I personally believe that, that, that going in from the front side, when you lift up on the jig, I firmly believe it makes the jig lift more naturally. So anyway, I go in the front side Take my tag in, loop around, and go back again through the front side. Some of you might be able to see it, some of you might not, but there's a round loop that's right there that I've started. And what I do is take my tag in, and I take it down to where that round loop is about the size of a dime or maybe a little bit, about a half a dime, about the size of a, of a black eye pea.
Then I take my tagged end and I wrap it around the main line. In my boat, I'm a lot faster. Now that I've completed the wraps, um, most of the time I wrap it at least five times. Sometimes I go seven or eight. It depends on the pound test line. If I'm using anything below 15, I will usually wrap it seven. If I'm using anything above 15, I wrap it five. Just because bigger line ends up, your stacks are larger, they're harder to cinch down. Once we got our wraps, This is the real key to the knot. Once you wrap it, you should have two different loops down there at the hook eyelet. You'll have the loop that you made from the first, the first uh, pass through, then you'll have another loop from the second pass through. Then I take the tagged end, go through both loops, and I start to cinch it down to where the knot almost starts sliding, and then I stop. Then I take, and most of you who have two hands will do this with your hands, but with your hands, you take and hold the tagged in along with your hook eye or your, like, jig head or whatever hook you're using. You wet it down good. Call a country boy spit bath. Take your tagged in and your hook eyelet, Hold them together. I don't know how many of y'all might have been able to see that from where you were sitting or standing, but when I held that tagged in and wrapped the other line around my hand, it cinches all those stacks down together. Well then, that right there snugs it pretty good the way you saw me doing it. But here's the part that if you got a weak stomach, you might want to turn your head. It looks like it's all snug, but to make sure it is, this is what I do. Now see, I got the hook point. That's a real stiff weed guard, so it's trying to pop out. Put the hook point in my hand. And there you have it. Then you take it out and you go, because it feels a whole lot better. But that is the, um, uh, like I said, a lot of people have called it the old tri lean knot, um, the improved sense knot. A lot of people call it different things. I like tying that knot uh, because it's simple, it's fast, and not only that, in all the years I've tied it, when I tie it correctly, I've never had that knot slip and come loose on me. I've never had the knot break on me. If my line has broken when I've got up, got it up, then at the end of it, it doesn't have the curly cue. So it tells me if it's got a curly cue, that means the line has broken in the knot. I've never had that knot break on me, whether I'm throwing braid, floor carbon, uh, mono, you name it. But that's the knot I tie on everything except a topwater bait that I want to have some loose slack in it to walk it, or unless I tie, you know, a braid to fluorocarbon or one leader to another, one line to another, make it a leader. So there you have it. Well, guys, thank you all so much for coming.
Um, I'll be here for the next little bit, so if anybody would like a photo or you got any questions, let me know. I'll be glad to help you out. No problem at all. Thank you all so much. God bless you.